Question number six has to do with finding the key parts when an equation is written in intercept form. Intercept form looks like this, y equals a times x minus p times x minus q. When an equation is written in intercept form, you need to start by finding the two x-intercepts. Those are located at the p and the q. The easiest way to find the x-intercepts is to set each of the factors equal to zero and solve for x. It's going to be the opposite of the sign that you see in the equation. Once you have your two x-intercepts, that's your p and your q, and the axis of symmetry is just halfway between them. So to get the axis of symmetry, you add up the p plus the q and then divide it by two. With the axis of symmetry, we also have the x-coordinate of our vertex. To get the y-coordinate of the vertex, you just evaluate the function at the x-coordinate. So whatever number you get for x equal, you plug that number into the equation and that'll give you the y-coordinate of the vertex. Finally, the value of a for intercept form does the same thing that it always does. If a is positive, our graph opens up. If a is negative, it opens down. If the absolute value of a is greater than one, it becomes narrower. And if the absolute value of a is between zero and one, then the graph becomes wider. Question number six comes from lesson 8.4 on quadratic functions in intercept form. We want to identify the x-intercepts, axis symmetry, vertex, and y-intercept of the following quadratic function. Remember, you can always use your graphing calculator to help you too, um, but this can all be done by hand. So the first step is to find the x-intercepts, and you do that by taking each of the factors and setting them equal to zero. So I'm going to start with that first factor, x plus 3 equals 0. It's a quick one-step equation. If we subtract 3 on both sides, we get x equals negative 3. So our x-intercept is going to be at negative 3, 0. To get the second x-intercept, we just take the second factor and set it equal to 0. x minus 1 equals 0. You're going to add 1 on both sides to get x alone. And we get positive 1. Those are the two x-intercepts, which are the p and the q in the equation. The next step is to find the axis of symmetry, and we're going to use the formula x equals p plus q divided by 2. It's going to be halfway between the two x-intercepts. Plug in those numbers that we just found, negative 3 plus 1 divided by 2. Simplify the numerator first. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Then divide that by 2, and we get negative 1. That's our axis of symmetry, and it's also the x-coordinate of the vertex. To find the y-coordinate of the vertex, we just need to evaluate the function at x equals negative 1. Remember, f of x is the same as y. So to find the y value there, we're just going to take the function. We're going to replace both the x's with negative 1. So I have negative 3 times negative 1 plus 3 times negative 1 minus 1. And then simplify inside the parentheses first. That's what we do with order of operations. Um, negative 1 plus 3 is 2. And negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. And you're going to see when you do intercept form, these two numbers are always going to be the same. Just one of them will be positive and one of them will be negative. So that's a good little thing to check. Now just multiply those numbers together. 3. And I need to add the negative here. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. And negative 6 times negative 2 is 12. And feel free to use a calculator if you need to. There we have the vertex at negative 1, 12. You could also put this function into your calculator and go to the table and find negative 1, 12 right in the table. The last piece now is the y-intercept. And remember to find the y-intercept, we plug in x equals 0. So going back to the same equation, I'm going to replace both of the x's with the number 0. So we have 0 plus 3 and then 0 minus 1. Now simplify inside the parentheses. And then we just multiply those three numbers together. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Negative 9 times negative 1 is positive 9. So that makes our y-intercept at 0, 9.